Okay, forgot to press record so we can start that again. Make sure we record everything. Washan, good morning. Good morning, Richard. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here today. Oh, I'm pleased. Um, well, it's great to finally, um, like, officially talk to you. We've just spent the last, honestly, the last hour preparing the technicals and everything. And, and you'd think that um, it would work, you know, but it's, in a way, it's nice. It's, it's, it maybe is very appropriate for, for what we're talking about and, um, and who, who you help. Uh, because as far as, uh, as far as I know, you know, I came across you and Dreams Possible as, you know, people that obviously we plan perfect lives. We plan, plan lives where everything just, you know, you plug this in and it just works and then you, you go out to work and you find exactly the right job um, that you're looking for and you make a lot of money and blah, 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 blah. And then it, things don't go as planned. So I came across you because I heard of Dreams Possible. It was training people in life coaching skills that then went to socially weak areas and said like, okay, things haven't gone as planned, but it's not the end. These are the skills that we give to the top chief executives in Hong Kong. These are the skills which can transform lives. And I'm like, I've been into energy work for so long and I was a little bit wrapped up in my own energy work. And I went, wait a minute, Washan, you've created something incredible, which I think a lot of people don't even know. So could you just give us a quick, like what is Dreams Possible? You know, and where, where did you start originally? What was, what, what is it now? Where, I, that's, oh, that's an awful question. I'm giving you a lot of questions at the same time. I tell you, you're free to answer it how you like, Washan. Okay. Um, Dream Possible is a charity that I found uh, 15 years ago. And my intention is very simple, is to gather, uh, solicit and gather more and more Hong Kong people to, um, to work on ourselves for the betterment of the society and the people around us. And so we use a lot of mindfulness, coaching and spirituality. I integrate different um, psychotherapeutic and different perspectives, um, which is very um, inspiring and helpful to me. And so yes. I, I try to, to, to conduct this kind of workshops and I find it quite, we, we are very blessed. And so the, mm. the, our community grow quite, quite rapidly. And now we have uh, more than 100, keep on uh, concurrently, more than 100 volunteers and serving lots of di different walks of life and especially under underprivileged uh, people, yeah. Wow, I mean that, that that's um, that's pretty fantastic. Um, so I suppose I have to go. And actually, you've you've been. I just want to give a shout out. You've actually started something new recently, haven't you? In the oh, yeah. uh, in the in the in the change where we we've had COVID. It's like, you know, life gives you lemons, make lemonade. What, yeah. what did you do recently since COVID? And because of COVID and all our regular classes stop, and now we almost start a TV station. <laughs> wow. So what, what are you doing on the TV station? No, no, no. It's just a, <laughs> uh, it's just a projection. I, um, now every day we have a TV program for three minutes um, broadcast. And for two months, more than two months already, and it's extremely well received. And every day there are more than uh, 10,000 people watching it. And so, and, and now actually the Jockey Club notice it and they love it. And that is sponsored to do more uh, of this. Um, actually it's mindful coaching. I, I would say mindful coaching. And okay. on live TV and every morning. Um, so I, I I, I feel that the, the entire community uh, uh, progress to a different mm. horizon mm. from the classroom. And now we, we try to broaden and spread it to, to almost all of Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. So, so essentially, I mean, honestly, you know, if we said it's a TV station, then, I, you know, I have to say, um, in a way, I think it is, you know, in the... <laughs> I think it's TV's cool. TV's changed, doesn't it? It's it's not the way we originally um, yeah, we conceived yeah, yeah. TV. Um, now everyone owns a TV station on Facebook. You can it, broadcast well, 
I, I exactly. I'm, I'm like, you're on Rich TV. So I suppose yeah. maybe that's just me, you know, just thinking, yeah, I'm on. I'm a TV station owner. Yeah. I downloaded Facebook. But um, now I... Uh, we've connected. I felt like we we were on a we we're on a similar wavelength, Washan. So uh, I don't know your story. Believe it or not, I don't think I know your story um, because very much we're trying to we're out there sort of trying to say, look, guys, come on, connect to this. You know, we, we, you've got the power. There's an enormous potential for power to change to grow in each of us. But when when did when did this happen? I always say, like, if you wanted to make money, or if you wanted success in, in traditional terms, and the way we're brought up in so many ways, you would have done something different. So what, what, what happened? Yeah, thank you, Richard. Um, yeah, I, I would like to share, I, I think, three little experiences that really transformed my life entirely. Um, mm. And it's quite quite profound experience. Um, okay, I'm sure um, it is. I'm sure it is. I kind of I'm I'm. You forgive me if I ask questions and and everything. Please, please I love please. to try and frame it as well. So so I'll you start and I might say, oh, well, how old were you and and where were okay. you? Yeah. Okay. Um, I met my guru, my spiritual guy, in 2004. I was totally intrigued by his clarity and purity and wisdom, because mm. I've never come across anyone with such uh, purity and clarity and wisdom. Mm. And indeed, he was only 29 years old at the time. And mm. Mm. half a year later, I encountered a major setback in my career with a serious um, confrontation with my colleague. Mm. So I called my guru. <laughs> I'm in mm. trouble. And I told him I want to learn compassion from him because I, I don't have any. Mm. And so I attended his class the, the evening after. Unexpectedly, just a few minutes after my guru started his teaching, I cried horrendously. Um, I felt so empty inside and I realized that I have lots of profound issues that I have resisted, that I have escaped all mm. over my life. For example, I use my privilege as a lecturer, as a scholar, as a writer to, to cover up my guilt, my, my, my fear, my, my anger, my, my, my problems. And that evening was definitely mind-blowing as I was elevated to a new horizon. And so I Tell me, so what happened? I mean, I want to know, I want to know blow by blow, like physically you're sitting there and then... Did you feel something physically? Did you, I, or I was it just a thought? Or okay, uh, Richard. Frankly speaking, I really don't know what happened. I just cry in a way I never. Oh. I I was conscious. And my mind is clear, but then my heart is just collapsed. My, I'm emotionally collapsed. I, I, and I, can I interrupt you? Because I just I totally relate to this. I was I was uh, on the 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 couch of a, a therapist. And she said, she's going to do a journey. And she said, um, we're going to take you to see God. And I felt a yeah. wind, a very light wind blow through me. And it was just a journey. Uh, and within uh, 10 minutes, I was crying my eyes out and I didn't know yeah. why. Yeah. And I just knew that I was, I, I can't, I can't, it was a, it was a speechless. It was a speechless yeah. moment. I can't, yeah. so I, I can, yeah. I, I think I'm trying to frame it for everybody so that you can actually <laughs> you can actually be in touch with, in a way, a deeper part of yourself that that is so wise and is in a way so sad at what you're doing, um, and and, and it, it just moves you okay. so okay. so deeply. Okay, Richard. Frankly, I really don't know what happened at the point. I was absolutely speechless, hmm. stunning. And I know that I, the feeling is that I was wrong, totally wrong all my life. And I don't know why, but I, I don't know what, but then it's so stunning. And, and so I decided to confront myself in the most authentic way. I feel that I was so deceptive all my life. Yeah, yeah. That and, so and that's beautiful. I, I, didn't wish, I didn't see anything. I didn't visualize 
any image, no. But just it's so stunning. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, so it was, it was literally, that was literally what I felt as well. As I yeah, felt yeah. like I've been so, I've, I've been so inauthentic for yeah. years. Yeah. And I've been yeah, caught. Exactly. And I've, I've exactly. been caught. It's like I've yeah. been caught by probably the worst person that could catch me, which is myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, similar. And so, so I mean, I, I, and the reason I share is because I think if I share, I'm kind of letting letting other people get an idea. It's like it's it, it's um. Do, do you know what I mean? Like it, it's just an incredible experience. Yeah. It, uh, it, so uh, what, you you decided to confront yourself. So how did that look? What did that um, look like? Because I, at the point. Um, that experience really changed my life because I, I have a huge trust for my guru because uh, I, I really feel that he loves me. He loves me and he needs nothing from me. And I feel that's the mm. true love and unconditional love in a way I never experienced. Mm. Because in my previous experience, love is always deceptive, always mixed. Yeah. Um, and so I started to attend his classes several times a week. And I, med- I start to meditate, mm. and often with great joy and inner peace, mm. and, and proceed quite well at that s- several months, always with bliss. And so you went on your own journey to just yeah. try and, okay, just I, need to, I just follow just, you. I, I'll, just I'll follow sit me. in some, I'll trust somebody who loves me without yeah. question, without, yeah. Yeah. in you fact. Must, yeah. Yeah, and, it doesn't matter what I've done after, in the past. Yeah, after several, several months, I decided to, to integrate uh, psychotherapy, psychoanalysis with Buddhism and want to transform it into a therapeutic uh, workshops. And I think that could, oh, that could help hundreds and thousands of people. Yes. So I told my guru this great plan and expect great validation from him. Mm. And when I told him uh, this dream, to my utter uh, disappointment, obviously he saw through my ego. And then he replied, Washan, if you stay like this, you will kill yourself. You will suicide one day. Mm. And when I, when I heard this, I, I just collapsed and completely shattered. And because I have huge expectation for the Greek applause and he didn't. Mm. Mm. And after that, I, I learned- beautiful. I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, why do you think he, why do you think, did you, were you able to connect with what he was saying? I suppose. Oh yes, of course. Um, because he, he, he see, see through me and he noticed my big fat ego. He noticed that my big dream of helping people is just a projection of my fragile ego. Mm. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it, it's so, and it's so deceptive, isn't it? Because you feel like, well, wait a minute, I'm doing everything for everyone else. This is not yeah, for exactly. me. Exactly. And so I think he teach me a big lesson of surrender and, and he hit me. And so I go back to my so-called ordinary, life and continue my everyday practice of meditation and hiking and attending psychotherapeutic classes and so on. Mm. And then some months, several months later, my guru um, asked me again, Washan, how's your new workshop? And I replied, I was shocked. He, he asked me, I replied, oh, it's torn into pieces by you already. I drop it. And then he said, Washan, why don't you start it? It's so valuable. Go ahead. I cry again horrendously, but then it's joyful tears. And with his blessings, this time I started this new programming community 14 years ago. Wow. And it turned out to be a big success. Well, I've got, I've got good thousands of attempts. Yeah. Uh, with thousands uh, of attendants and volunteers and many social service and sponsored by different agency and, and charity foundation and so on. Oh, and that's beautiful. my first experience. Yeah. 
Wow. I mean, it's beautiful. Um, it, what, I, what I love about the story is, is number one, the first connecting with the, what I'll call divine, the, the, it, we, it, we can't say what it is, but there's something that totally, yeah. totally touches yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. in a way, I, I felt like, for me, it was, I felt like this is a deeper part of myself as well. This is, I'm, I'm being shown an authentic self, like a truly authentic self. And it, it, it kind of, this uh, ego-based, fear-based, having, having a big, I always say having bigger breasts or having bigger bank account or whatever it is, or, or is, is so, so in a way saddening for the authentic self. And then, um, and then you, your next part is you, you connecting more authentically. And then there's an ego which says, I'm, I've got a great idea. And then what happened is he took the eye out of it really, didn't he? He took the, he just made it a great idea. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. By, by sort of taking it away from you. And then giving yeah. it back to you. Yeah. It's uh it's master. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Yeah, it is, it is. So I, I really love him and I'm I'm so glad that I start this uh spiritual journey since then. Um so I, I would like to share um another experience that is really crucial to me. Um it's around one year after I started my spiritual path. And once I attended a, a, a big workshop with around 80, 90 people, and we sat on a big circle and listening to some spiritual songs, several songs, and continuously. And then this middle-aged guy sitting just opposite to me in this big circle, he started to cry out loud. He screamed, yell, as if he is under a spell or a curse. Quite scary, it's, ah, 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 something like this. Very, very scary. And he's loudly screaming, yelling. Uh, uh, how, I, uh, how, sorry, when was this? This was after a few years. No, one year. Around, around one year after I met this guru. And at that point, I started my spiritual path and I joined many different classes of, from different masters. And so once I joined this workshop with a big crowd of around 90 people, and so we listened to, and I think it's the second day of the workshop, mm. and the teacher uh, uh, play some some spiritual songs, and we are in big circle holding hands mm. like this. That's it. And then I watched, saw this guy yelling, shouting, quite quite scary in a very scary, almost in a spell or or curse. Something right, like, like he had a demon or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Typical, quite typical. <laughs> something like this. It's abnormal, absolutely yeah. abnormal and scary. Yeah. And at the point, I my response is quite weird too. I was very calm, super calm, unlike my normal self. <laughs> and without any conscious thought, I just stood up. I stood up and then holding my chair, walking towards him one step at a time, walking towards him, step by step. And then I sat down in front of him. And then an idea popped up right away at the point. May your suffering of infinite lives be passed to me. All your suffering mm -hmm. of infinite life passed to me. The idea felt so natural to me Although it's so scary, the idea. Mm. And then I, I hesitate for one second. Mm. And my spirit rushed out all the suffering. <laughs> I'll, I'll have all kinds of cancer right away. Um, mm. And bully and, 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 and... Yeah, terrible. And then, I realized it's, and then I realized the thought is not about me. It's not for me. So I just pray purely with this, with this wish. May all your suffering of all infinite lives be passed to me. And then around just around 10 seconds, he calmed down and he leaned towards me because I'm just around one or two feet from him. And he yeah. leaned on me. And so I embraced him. Mm. And 
we embraced, and he cried on my shoulder for a while. Mm. And after one song or, or around one, two minutes, he became more and more peaceful, and then very peaceful. And then when the music stopped, I asked, how you feel? What's your feeling? Mm. Because I, I, I'm, I'm shocked too, in a way. Mm. And I don't know what happened. It's, I just, it's very natural for me. Did you feel that, told, that, that anything was being negative was being transferred to you? No, nothing. Not at all. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Nothing mm. negative transferred to me. Mm. Uh, contrary wise, I felt that loss of energy transferring to, to him. Loss of mm. Buddha's light or, or compassion, blessing transferred to him. Mm. Mm. That's, that's how I feel. And I don't know what's about it. It's, it's just very natural. Right. And then he told me, when I asked him how, how you feel, he, he told me that um, when I sat down in front of him, he felt like he was surrounded by layers and layers of pure, pure light emanated by Buddha. Mm. And that pacified him. And he felt so comfortable, so loving, so secure. Mm. And even up till now, I, I, I couldn't say, I couldn't know what happened, actually. I right. just... About the huge it's almost like impact. this egoless action, this Wu Wei, yeah. like it's just yeah. not not you. It's you, but it's not you. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. Oh, wow. I dare not do it again. If now you are saying no, my ego will, will fear, will scare. No, I, I won't do it again. Yeah, By yeah. that time, I'm, I'm almost like a chandler. It's not about me. Yeah. But then the experience is so stunning and so profound and so so touching mm. and and actually at that period of time at that one or two years i i experienced several experiences of this kind of almost like uh, miracles and that that was very inspiring empowering and encouraging to me I, and so i it gave me strong confidence to pursue my spiritual journey i think you know what what um what I'm getting, and this is, reminds me of what my teacher taught me, is uh, a lot of people, they get it the other way around. They go and learn method, 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 without having yeah. experienced yeah. this deep, uh, deep connection. Like the, the, I would say the nothingness or the, the, the divine emptiness or um, a complete surrender, um, which is, in a way, it's the Jesus story. I give my life for you. Yeah. Or, um, I, and I'm, you know, I've studied Buddhism, Taoism and, and uh, Christianity. So I really don't know everything. Uh, but I do understand that Islam means surrender to God. So from, yeah. from, from my point of view, and I, and I really am not a scholar of that, or I wouldn't even say I'm a great scholar. But um, people, they go out and study method, method, method. And they think that that's the answer. And actually, it's not. The answer is something far, far, far more fundamental. And in a way, yeah, sure. not a lot of doing, it's a lot less doing. Did yeah. you, what, what comment do you have on that? Oh, I completely agree. It's not about doing, it's completely about being. And the uh, <clears throat> only way through it is surrender, and that's it. Of course, it takes years and years of practice. It takes a very uh, vigorous uh, daily practice. But then the intention, the mindset, to come from is, is very important. Ex exactly what you said. Uh, don't search for methods, skills. It's, it's, uh, it so reminds me of, um, uh, it reminds me why we, we are on the, this vibe. I think we've just got the same vibe yeah. for me. Yeah. So just, yeah, it's like everyone's, like people even turn methods into MLMs where they're saying yeah. you will learn this method and this method. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Actually, the, yeah. I'm happy to teach you a simple method, but if you don't get back to yourself, it's all, it's all adding to your ego. And it, in yeah. a way it's, it's baggage. Yeah. Um, Actually, I, I agree, fully agree because I think these methods can be very dangerous and very deceptive because it boosts up our ego. I'm a spiritual practitioner. Exactly. I'm, and I can, I can teach you three methods. 
to enlightenment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and um, in fact, that, that, it brings me to a point actually where I, I feel like um, I was talking yesterday to a, a doctor in America, a medical doctor, and she does energy work. Um, and I was saying, well, cults uh, and mind control organizations use energy work. They do, exactly. and it works. Exactly. Um, exactly. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to name anybody, yeah, but uh, there is a fundamental difference. And we, we're talking about these gateway experiences where you, uh, the old ta uh, Taoist, uh, the, the, signif the, the significator of Taoism was Mun, so the yeah. door, the gate. Yeah. You, yeah. You, and we, you say Ruman, which was you begin, you go through a door, and it's like a gateway experience. And doors have their functionality through emptiness. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have an empty space, you're not going through that door. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I think it's wonderfully beautiful. And that's not, that's not mine. That's coming directly from, from the man that woke me up at 24. Um, but um, do you, do you have any, I mean, do you have any advice? I know we've got your third experience, which I'm excited about, but do you have any advice for people <laughs> who, who are, <laughs> who are like, they're faced with, this deep desire to help and they go okay. and they, they, they see an organization which says, be the authentic you. And then they're, yeah. tr they're trapped in uh, 20,000 courses that are saying, well, the, yeah. the next level you become the authentic, authentic 50th grade you. Um, yeah. So do you have any advice of how should you approach this part? Okay. Uh, um, I can't advise anyone. I can only advise myself. I think um, charity starts at home because I think spirituality m must be grounded in everyday mundane practice. Mm. And I think we need to be very beware of, of the temptation to use spirituality as a, as a very deceptive weapon to romanticize ourselves and to escape our personal issues, human issues. And because as, as you said, I, I think spirituality could be another form of ego dress up in more deceptive, more high ground. And it's especially dangerous when we, like me now, I become a spiritual teacher with hundreds of followers yeah. <laughs> looking up for a spiritual guru. And that's more dangerous indeed. So, Incredibly uh, dangerous, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think we, 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 it's crucial to persevere with our own daily practice. And I think we need to avoid technical jargons when we talk to people and spiritual jargons could be very um, patronizing and dehumanizing um, to mm. people. So I think doing so service to ordinary people is uh, actually a very good spiritual practice. And that's why I love uh, uh, Gandhi, his famous uh, statement, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Yeah, so I think it's a good reminder and to be very, very humble. humble. That's beautiful. And um, yeah. um, you, you, you brought me um, to the idea. Are you, so many thoughts went through my mind as you were talking. Okay. And I was just thinking it's yeah. so beautiful. And it, in a way, I can say my mind is now just sitting there in this nice, blank, empty space. Uh, <laughs> talking. So I think you must have just got it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to just enjoy that. So, uh, and people can... Uh, people can um oh yes no that's what i was going to say is um very much one of the mind control things is using jargon and using terminology yeah, yeah. so that you, you so that you um you kind of uh disconnect other people like only if you're in the in group are you going to understand what we're talking yeah. about yeah um so that's what that's what occurred to me so i like that you said yeah, if people start using terminology where other people are excluded or then be careful because it's a, a way of uh, disconnecting you from your social groups and then saying you belong to us, which is, yeah, which, which well, I mean, we do belong to groups, you know, that's fair enough. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah the, the cults are, they have hidden agendas, essentially. That's the, that's yeah. the dangerous thing. And you don't realize until you're, you're in too deep. So, 
No, you're, you're, you're completely right. I, I think using jargons, this we data dichotomy, I'm better because I'm on the spiritual path and you are still on the very mundane money game. And, and, and the thing is, is, we need to be very, very, truly very humble and always confront our own ego because ego is so deceptive and always dress up in, in spiritual clothing. And so yeah. I think it's a good reminder for us. Yeah. I'm also reminded of, um, you might know of Dacher Keltner, Professor Dacher Keltner of uh, UCLA, yeah. uh, his work yeah. on power. And yeah. that whenever we gain power through empathy and power yeah. being the ability to influence others as a yeah. definition, we yeah. gain power through empathy and then we get to a certain level of power and we lose all of our empathy. We literally yeah. become well, and losing com empathy completely is the definition of a psychopath. Yeah. Um, and that's where you're prepared to abuse others. And uh, yeah. it's an irony that it, and it, yeah, even the, the, Dacher Keltner's book, the, the Power Paradox, wonderful book, and he talks about how animals will do the same thing. But humans, we have the ability to learn, oh, I'm increasing my power, let me just bring myself down let me let me in a way make a circle let me circle back to my humble origins and yeah. that i am actually i'm nothing <laughs> yeah. actually i'm 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 nothing as well as being something i'm yeah. nothing yeah. as well yeah. so, yeah. so i actually I, i'm i'm a big fan of a uh, guru and mentorship because i think we easily deceive ourselves so i think it's, it's very fortunate and very crucial to have a mm. guru that uh, guiding us because otherwise we easily trap and 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 in our own big fat ego and we feel we have so so much so many righteous um good feeling about ourselves which can be truly dangerous yeah. and, and so it's interesting because there's been a strong uh, i have uh, students in india where, where i teach and um there's been a strong shift in india away from the guru because there was so much abuse so what advice do you give to somebody when they're finding a guru or when they're, they feel like their guru may have accidentally, he's taken a wrong turn? Do you have any advice there? I mean, that's a really difficult question. Um, yeah, I, I think um, I'm very clear that I follow not my guru, but the purity and clarity behind him or um, the clarity, purity and the wisdom that he is pursuing to he is also a human being. My guru is also a human being. Mm. Only that he is more professional, more mm. experienced than I. Mm. Um, so uh, I'm not following him, the person. So I can find fault in him easily. Mm. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Because I'm not following the person. And, mm. and it helps me quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. My, my teacher had a wonderful statement. He said, if you follow me, you don't follow me. And if you yeah, don't follow exactly, me, you follow exactly. me. This yeah. is, but which, which actually means I want you to follow me, but you're not supposed to follow me. You're not supposed to be me. Yeah. Um, because it's so easy to project our, our uh, father figure, mother figure, and our, our graph for love unconditional to our fixation in, and fixate to this guru. And then it become a huge attachment. Yes, it's fear-based. Fear, fear, uh, fear. You you're seeking approval and you're afraid yeah, of exactly, rejection. Exactly. And, and yeah. then you're screwed, as, as they yeah. would say. Yeah. I'm, I'm now kind of ready for your uh, last experience, or maybe I'm sure it's not, I'm, it's not your last experience. I can't believe it's your last experience. I think you've got like so many. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased that I've done this uh, talk with you, Washan. I'm really Okay, happy. thank you. Thank you. Um, the, the third experience, actually, I want to share here uh, is my... I want to share my mother. I love her deeply and have maintained a very good relationship with my mother. Mm. And she passed away in uh, 2006. And the early morning she passed away, I, ca I, I called my guru. And, and I went to the center of my guru and to do a little chanting for my mother. Mm. And mm. when I start to chant with my guru next, sitting next to me for my mother, I cried madly loudly and after around 10 minutes 
I keep crying and my guru chanting and chanting and chanting. My guru just told me, Washan, close my eyes and you will see Buddha and all deities surrounding my, your mother. And to my great, great shock, <laughs> I literally, literally saw Buddha and all the deities surrounding my mother. Mm. And she, my mother was dancing joyfully in the middle. Mm. And the picture was so uh, vivid, so stunning, so real. Mm. Mm. And, and the picture pacified me immediately, right away. And with great immense joy and immense gratitude since then. Mm. And up, up till now, uh, whenever I think of my mother, I, I'm, I'm full of joy, love and gratitude. And wow. So, so you I'm didn't so have to go through the grief phases. That's kind of amazing. No, almost none. It's, it's, uh, I, I don't want to promote this kind of almost weird experiences, but because it's so true to me and so, so crucial to me. And it, it gives me, give me huge confidence. I, I, want to, I want to almost disagree with you because I, I feel like um, there's something wonderful about not promoting it, definitely. Like, it's, <laughs> it's about, you know, it really is about doing the dishes. Like, um, it, it, and I say it's the mundane yeah. uh, and, and doing the hard work. And we had a, had a wonderful interview with Shoshana um, Weinberg, who I introduced you to, uh, about, like, you sit down and you meditate for hours and hours and hours. You do the work. You do you do the the training, yeah. Um, but and very much you find in Zen that they absolutely never talk about the the, the esoteric experiences that we have. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's gone to the point that now people think uh, they believe in physicalism in 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 that there is only the physical. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I've had so many experiences and I, you know, I didn't in, in some ways I didn't really, I, no, it's not, I was going to say I didn't really choose to, I did. I definitely did choose to, I've done, I've done the work um, myself, but, but I feel like some people there suddenly they're walking along as my, one of my teachers, they're walking along and suddenly they get the doors open for them. The door opens. And they have these gateway experiences where they experience um, the ego, egoless state and they don't know what's going on and nobody's ever told them. Um, and, and I feel like we, we kind of lost this uh, connection to this culture where we know about it. And so um, like part of, my, part of my journey is, and is why I want to talk to you is uh, to connect people with these stories because you know, um, it life life is really full of quite amazing, miraculous things, and and uh, and just physicalism, uh, it doesn't explain everything. Uh, True. In in yeah. my point of view, from my point of view. So, and I I actually I'm really surprised. I've got to tell you because you won't believe this, but I thought you were a big Christian. I didn't actually know you. <laughs> I didn't even know you're Buddhist because uh, I felt <laughs> I've seen you connecting with uh, the the Jesus story um, like very much, and uh, it was just an assumption of mine. It's like, oh, wow, wow, that's really nice. I didn't know Washan is a Christian, and then I'm like, oh, he's a Christian, and now I'm like, today it's like, oh, it's Buddhism. So, um, yeah, it's kind of nice. I, I was a Christian um, when I was young. Uh, actually, a very, very uh, devoted, dedicated Christian for mm. 10 years. And mm. then I quit painfully, very, very, very painfully. It's very painful to, to quit Christianity, actually, for me, at least. Mm. And then I, I, for a long time, for decades, I pissed off all religion. I, I can't carry it. It's because the, I'm really traumatized, my experience in, in Christianity. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I, I, I think what really inspired me, that really um, intrigued me, is spirituality. Uh, is so so open, so broad. It's beyond. I, I love Gandhi again. God has no religion. God has yes. no 
religion. Oh, Jesus religion. wasn't a Christian, and nor yeah, was yeah, Buddha. Yeah. Buddha wasn't a yeah. Buddhist. Yeah. And so, so now I won't. Usually, I won't call myself a Buddhist. Although I, I won't mind. Occasionally, I do, but uh, it's not the point. It's not right. about any religion. Yeah, it's just my my little experience. That, but I'm so so um, glad and so 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 honored to be inspired by Buddha and Buddhism. It totally transformed me. Totally. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, it's Buddha's birthday, so it's. Uh, oh yeah, thank you, Buddha. <laughs> it, it, it <laughs> maybe it's sort of an appropriate uh, day to to yeah. to pay homage to like the incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, without a doubt, like for me, it's it's kind of like energy work. I mean, I suppose that can you you've told of these incredible experiences. How do you relate to energy? I mean, do well, you relate I, I, to energy? It's just just names, mere name, mere imputation. I, it's everything is energy. So, I usually use spirituality, but uh, yeah, it it is energy, of course. Matter is energy. It's from Einstein. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I think true. I I think it's it's what's good about neuroscience for the last twenty years is we reclaim. The power of energy. We didn't mm. dis we didn't uh, discover it because it, it was there for thousands and thousands of years. But then we reclaimed the power, which is good. Yeah. Mm. And and one of the things I love is is we don't really know anything. Yeah. Despite true. having you know science, bless it, it's a tool which our consciousness use uses to explore the world. And yet, it hasn't discovered what consciousness is. True. So it's yeah. it's unable to do that. So and bless. So ble I, I mean, I'm a scientist. I believe in science yeah. <laughs> as a tool, and and just as a tool. It it can't be the answer. Uh, yeah, it might I give agree. us many yeah. answers, but itself is yeah. Yeah. it is not an yeah. answer. Yeah. So one lesson that I learned um, is don't trust yourself. Don't trust myself too much, because. More often than not, we, we believe in our own thoughts and feelings as real. <laughs> but it's just a projection of the mind. And, and mm. perception is more often than not projection. And that's why just now I, I think it's, it's fortunate and crucial to find a, a, a mentor or guru. Uh, mm. he, he or she need not to be prestigious or, or international master, but we need someone to guide us to the path of inner peace. Mm. And, and, I, I, and I think when we found our genuine root guru, it's so obvious because we, it hit us right away and we become so joyful and peaceful. It's beyond words, speechless, as you said. Mm. And, and I think when, when I love this, um, when I perceive someone as my spiritual guide, anyone, he or she will function as my spiritual guide at that point. So I think our perception is more important mm. than the content of the teaching of my guru. Yeah. And yeah, you can tell that I want to ask, no, do finish your sentence. I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah. Well, no, okay. what I was going to say, it sounds like almost that what you've done is, is with uh, Dreams Possible is you've set up an organization of spiritual guides. Is that, is that I don't know. To say that? You don't know. I don't know. Um, is that so taking it too you far? I, uh, you mean I become the... I, 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 just correct me. You mean I become the spiritual guy of my teachers? No. No. Dreams what Possible as an organization is, is training people to coach and guide uh, people in difficult situations uh, yeah. to, to deal with them. And in that yeah. way, they, you've created an organization or a network of spiritual guides or spiritual guidance. Oh, um, yes and no. Yes, obviously. No, because I strongly advocate uh, self-coaching. I strongly advocate self-coaching. I think um, no one can coach you uh, unless I am willing to be open and to be surrendered. And so... Um, 
follow your, your inner sacredness. Okay, so in this regard, we, we hope everyone in Hong Kong can find their own unique spiritual path, their own unique uh, coaching uh, neural pathway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's yeah. beautiful. I mean, I think that's what it's about. And I think that's in, and I'd say that's what your, your, your teacher wants for you as well. Yeah, I, I think so. So, I mean, that, that is totally what it's about. I mean, that's so beautiful. And actually something, I, 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 thanks Richard. And I think two years ago, now I, I, I didn't, <clears throat> I think now I see my teacher once at most in once or two, twice in one or two years, rarely. Uh, around two years ago, I met him again and I shared with him the progress of my dream possible, the community. And my teacher, my guru is so pleased. And then he's just replied one sentence. I think he said, Washan, I think it's because of your pure intention and the blessing of the Buddha. And that part I cry again, but that is so, so touching. So I think um, intention is so, so important. I would say utterly important, or I would say the most important thing. Because we, we live in a time of temptations. Every day we have tens and tens of choices in front of our tens of our workshop gurus, classes, gatherings, mm. all mm. are meaningful, valuable. And so it's, it's not easy to persevere with single pointed focus day and night, years after years. So, so I think we need to be very frank and honest to ourselves. What kind of cost I'm willing to pay to, to pursue my spiritual path? Because many, many people pursue spirituality for decades, but remain depressive and fatigued. And I think we need to check in our, our intention. And, and we need blessings. And we need to purify ourselves on a, on a day level. And I, I, I like to quote my, my teacher. One, there's one quote I really love from him. He said, pure mind sees pure things. In pure mind perceives impurities. So I think such pure mind is priceless, worth mm. worth a lifetime pursuit. And, mm. and so that's I, I'm 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 so glad to have him as my guru mm. because he yes. always hits me about this intention. Mm. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I can I I can relate to the the effect of somebody where you have this deep connection to him just saying one or two words and it just like being so powerful hitting yeah. one so deeply that that's yeah. in a way something that's uh, a witness to the depth of connection that's beautiful uh, it Wash is. Washan, it's just a uh, it's an inspiring story um, okay thank you <laughs> now people can connect to to um, you to Dreams Possible really easily, can't they? Oh yes, you can just type Dream Possible, and you will find me. Yeah. But but it's not. It's mostly now. I know it's mostly in uh, Cantonese. It's mostly Chinese. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's uh, Cantonese and Chinese, and and now we have a big platform for a free. A uh, big platform for everyone in Hong Kong, but it's Chinese, and we, we now we have already thousands of people coming, more than three thousand citizens, and we share and and all these uh, spiritual and psychological tools, self coaching tools, hope to empower people to to enrich their life and and for in self coaching and transformation. But there is there is that whole group of. Um... English speaking coaches that could come and share their experience. And um, do you think you'll eventually um, um, be international? Um, I say internet, you are international, but I mean, will you be multilingual? Uh, I, I hope so. I, Richard, maybe I invite you to help us. <laughs> um, yeah. I would love to. I mean, whatever I can do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I am sure there will be a day that will be more uh, bilingual or multilingual. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you invited me uh, one, two, I've, I've been three times teaching and you've, oh, yeah. you've supplied, yeah, yeah. A, you supplied a translator. So just, if there's somebody that, and, and yes, I talk for free, yeah, um, because it's, it's a charity and I want to, you know, I feel, I feel blessed that I could teach something to a room full of 40, 40 50 people, and then that goes out 
um, you know, and it's just um, potentializes, you know, sort of exp exponentially, potentially. And I just, I just love it. And now yeah, I know the story I, behind it. I'm just, I'm really, I, I, I feel like I've collected your story a little bit and it's a little gem and, and people can go, ah, you want to know why he does this and how it happened? Just, <laughs> just click there okay. and you'll hear the story okay. in English. Um, but you know, we ha have, have you told it in, in uh, Chinese before? Sorry? Have you told this story that you've told me in oh, Chinese? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, you've I recorded did, it. I did. Okay. I did in Chinese. But English is my first time. So it's my true honor. And also it's our honor to have you, Richard, to come to our, our, our Dream Sports years ago for several times to teach us uh, energy works. And the re response is very good. Thanks so much, Richard. Yeah. Well, you're an absolute angel. Um, Waishan, let's keep in touch. And okay, thank you. We, yeah. will, we will talk to... Uh, we'll, we'll definitely share this soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.